QDZ a double easy, another episode. All about semis. How about your drivers? Well, catching up with y'all. Last couple days has been interesting. I just shut it down for the night. It's about 4:12. I actually shut it down about two hours ago, but I've been driving around on PC, sightseeing. Down in Ohio, in Ohio, I got a load coming out of Ohio tomorrow night, taking me back south, back into Florida, that delivers on Monday. Really good load, good paying load. And uh, I'm happy about it. I've been out two weeks. Two weeks I've been out. I know I don't have a heart attack. But I'm taking next month off and I'm not coming back out until October. So I figured I might as well make the best of it. I'm not sure when I get home if I'm going to... Um, you know, when I deliver Monday, I might run that week. You know, but if I do anything, it's going to be probably strictly Florida and Georgia. Maybe Alabama, maybe. And that's a maybe. But I'm like, maybe I'll just finish this one out. Because I'm definitely uh, not going to be doing nothing until October. But, nonetheless, topic of this video... One of the things that I don't miss about being leased on is that when you say no and you don't want to do a load, it's no. It ain't no going back in between or I'm going to call Landstar and report you or self service failure. Never had any of those came pretty close but never had any you know because some of these these agents man and these brokers will try and you know call on you and be like well the driver did this or the driver you know driver 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 or you say you don't want to load after you get the load because they didn't tell you something they be holding back the details and then when you get the Raycon you're like oh no 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 I'm not taking it then they want to call and say well he accepted the load now he doesn't want it and then you know all that, that that it's just a hassle it's one of the things that i don't miss about being leased on um which brings me to a situation i ran into yesterday when i was down in colorado i booked the load um that was actually going to georgia and um you know actually no it wasn't going to georgia yeah it was it was going um going out south to georgia towards georgia or no virginia it's going to virginia and then i was going to get a load from virginia going to georgia or back south but nonetheless the load i booked it they told me well it's a work in um, I said, well, what time do I need to be there? They said, well, it's a work and By this time, it was like 8 o'clock in the morning. I said, okay, well, I can be there by 11 o'clock. I got some running around I need to do while I'm here in the area. I needed to go to Thermal King, y'all, and get the belts for my tri-pack because I was using aftermarket belts, and that was another issue, and that was the whole thing in itself. So I, I have went and got the, the OEM belts from uh, Thermal King and got some little stuff I want to knick-knack with the truck. So I told them, I'll be there by 11.30. And um, the guy said, okay, when you get there, you know, they'll get you loaded. I was okay with the working. I was okay with that because that gave me time to, you know, 
get there and sit and I could put my belt on my tri pack and just kind of tinker around with the truck. So, make a long story short, here's what happened. I get there and they're like, it's like trucks, it's, it's probably like about 10 trucks there before me and a couple still pulling in. And I'm like, well, we're gonna be here a while. And I was okay, because by that time I showed up early. I actually got there at 10.30, so I was an hour early. Then, then I told the broker that I was gonna be there. But I was all prepared to wait, you know, two hours, three hours. I was okay with that. So I jumps out there, starts working on the truck while I was parked, waiting. Um, next thing I know about three hours past, I was laying down in the truck. I, I think about three hours later, I, I laid down in the truck. I got a phone call from a, um, the, a lady and she's like, I'm calling about the load. I said, yeah, well, I've already been talking to uh, your other guy from about this load. It's a work in. I'm waiting to get load. She says, oh, you haven't been loaded yet. I says, no, I'm waiting to be loaded. And then I happen to um, look at my clock and I realize it's like 2.30 at this, at, well, 2 o'clock actually at this time. And I said, well, well, I got you on the phone. I understand this is a work in, but I'm almost going on five hours. So how does that work with detention? She goes, well, since it's a work-in, um, they don't usually pay for detention on a work-in because they're working you in. The backstory was they hired another carrier to pick up the load, and apparently they dropped the ball and didn't pick the load up, and the load was supposed to have been picked up, I want to say, days ago. So I said, okay, no problem wasn't a whole lot of conversation because you already let me know that I'm not getting paid and they don't know when they're going to load me. I said, I'll tell you what, if I don't have a door by 2.30, I'm canceling this load and um, you guys can find somebody else to take it because I, I can't sit here. I'm not going to sit here past 5 o'clock. And at this time, it was, again, 2 o'clock Colorado time. So that meant it was like 4 o'clock you know, on the East Coast, which means it was going to be that much harder to get a recovery load. So she says, okay, um, I'll, I'll, I'll be in touch. 2.30 comes around. She don't call me. I send a text message and I say, hey, I need you guys to pull me off this load. I'm not taking the load. Um, I got to, you know, find me a recovery load. Lo and behold, I get a call from TQL with another load, was like, hey, I got this load um, going to um, Ohio. I said, really? You know, I love Ohio. And that was one of the, where I wanted to go anyway for my load to go home. So I said, I said, well, what is it? The guy told me what it was. I said, how much it was. We agreed on it. I said, well, he was trying to get me to get it moving for like 16 or 1700 or something like that. I said, no, if you can do 2350, we can talk. And that's what we did. So I ran it in. And uh, speaking of which, I got to send my paperwork. I got to transfer this paperwork in. So I forget. So ran it in. Everything was cool. The other agent starts calling, calls me back. And it's another guy. I guess it's the owner of the brokerage. And he's like, yeah, I'm the boss here, man. He said, hey, um... Um, well, actually, let me back up. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm rambling, but if y'all made it this far, I appreciate you. So, uh, the original guy that booked the load sends me an email saying, hey, why didn't I hear about, about this before now, about, you know, you're going to come off the load? I said, oh, no. I've been talking to this lady via text and phone calls, and I told her that I wasn't going to be staying here past 2.30. I said, Let, I'm not going to play that game. I said, I'll show you the text messages if you want to see them. I said, take me off the load. So he goes, okay, um, I'll be in touch. That's, that's like they're going, going line. I said, okay. Meanwhile, I already got this other load locked in. Now the, the, the boss calls me and he's like, man, I, I'll give you, I don't know what's going on. I tried to reach out to the shipper. Apparently they're having some serious issues in there. And he said, 
I'm gonna be honest with you, Aaron. I don't know what to tell you. I, I I don't have no answer for you. I really would like you to stay on the load and keep you on the load, but I understand. On I said on the business standpoint, I can't continue to sit my truck here for five hours and then lose a day, and then this load delivers two days later now I'm gonna lose another day so I might not even be able to make no more money for this week because I'm running into the weekend I said on the business standpoint I can't do it so he goes I understand I understand and you know and, and his partner he's emailing me talking about so you're just gonna leave and make no money and I said yeah I'm gonna leave and make no money I, I said I, I said I did my part I gave you guys five hours of my time you know, I didn't even ask for it. I didn't even ask to get paid for it because I was resetting and I was right across the street from the load anyway at the pilot. I mean, TA. So I said, I'm not, yeah, I'm going to leave. I said, I'm going to leave because I'm going to go make some money. So the guy's like, I, I, he's like, can I give you, you know, 150 more on top of it to just hold you a little bit longer? I said, no, nah, man, 150 bucks ain't going to do it. I said, I, I got to go and get a couple thousand. I said, I, I can't. You know that was the reason I booked your load. You know, and he's like, "Man, I, I understand. I'm sorry." And I had just signed up with them that day. I just signed up. It was a new broker, and I said, "Ain't no love lost, but I'm not doing it." No, and you know, I say all that to say, when you say no as a carrier, it ain't no in between. It ain't no you can't leave. And oh, well, this that I'ma tell this person, tell that person. Ain't none of that. Ain't none of that. When I say I'm leaving, and this is how much time you got, that's it. And that was one of the things that I didn't like about Landstar. When I ran in the certain situations, Landstar would stand behind me, but I would have to deal with so much BS from the brokers, and then Landstar would invest investigate it, and they would always see that I was right and I would never get service failures and they would end up making them give me either, you know, truck order not used or, or something, but it was always a hassle. Like, it's almost like I was guilty until they proved me innocent type of thing, you know? And that is one of the things that I do not miss and that is one of the perks of having my own authority because I've had to deal with this a couple times already since I've had my own authority and when I when I get somewhere and I say no, I don't want it or I've got went and got a, to pick up a load and they told me it was one way in one thing, it was something else, I left it right there. I'm not taking a load. Period. So, you know, you just don't have to deal with that. I ain't mean to ramble y'all. I was just, you know, talking to y'all about what I was dealing with. I done talked 12 minutes about these brokers, man you know but good day it was a good day and i'm about to chill out relax transflow this paperwork so i can get paid and um kick back because my load don't pick up tomorrow until tomorrow night at 11 so i'm gonna fall all the way back until my neck crack and relax and i planned it out just like that because i dropped this load and i was technically out of I had an hour left after on my clock after I dropped this load at uh, 2 o'clock and I knew I wasn't going to be able to book any more loads to, that I could run during the day anyway. So I said, well, I need to book something for tomorrow. It needs to pay really well to complete my week and I want to pick it up late because I want to be able to chill and relax and recuperate and then midnight come, I'll be ready to drive on home, there won't be no traffic, and I can cruise on back to Florida because I don't have to have this done until Monday, so I planned it out well, um, and I'm good, everything's good. I'm going to go ahead and end this video, and um, I hope y'all staying cool out there, man, and I will holla back at you drivers. It's your boy QDZ the Double Easy. You have just watched another episode of All About Semis. Be safe, drivers.